Joey submitted me with the Buggy Choke, who's a black belt. And, uh, but I guarantee he's never gonna get me again in one, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if that's true or if Joey can find a way through my Buggy Choke defense. This roll is jam packed with information and it's one of my favorite ones that I've made. There's a ton of Darce Choke information and information on how to apply chokes in general and a ton more. Joey and I go way back. We've been training together since we were baby face white belts. And now Joey teaches Nogi at my gym and is one of the co-hosts of the Jordan Tosh Jitsu podcast. Make sure to check it out. But first, I'd like to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Soundcore Sport X10 Earbuds by Anchor. These earbuds are awesome. Sport X10 has unique ear hooks that can be rotated up to 210 degrees. This innovative design ensures that they stay on your ears during your workout, even if you have mangled cauliflower ears like me. I hate that with other earbuds, I often have to stop and adjust them during my workouts because they either fall off because they're physically unstable or uncomfortable to wear. Not with these. The Sport X10 is the perfect companion for your workout. The X10 brings maximum comfort and ultra fit during all your workout sessions. The Soundcore Sport X10 supports IPX7 and is waterproof and sweatproof, meaning that you can wash them after your workout and you don't have to worry about sweat. The Sport X10 delivers a double hit of bass enhancement. The dynamic acoustic system is customized to produce sound with two times more bass. On top of this, the proprietary bass up technology analyzes sound in real time and intensifies the bass to the max for more motivation during your workouts. Best of all, the Soundcore Sport X10 is ultra compact in size and can fit in your pocket or gym bag easily. Gotta check out the included breath app to get some quality breath work in before or after your workout. Check out the link in the description and pick up the Soundcore Sport X10 for yourself. So let's get started with the roll. I would have preferred to enter with my foot on the inside between Joey's legs, but Joey does a great job of getting a shin on shin. I want to step over Joey's leg to enter into headquarters so I can pass easier. I notice that Joey doesn't have his elbow close enough to his body and there's room for me to sneak in my underhook. Joey feels the threat of the knee slide so he transitions to reverse Delaheva and grabs my ankle with his grip underneath his own leg. That grip will stop Joey's leg from going flat onto the mat, which I need to happen in order to knee slide. The problem for Joey is that he also needs to protect his head from being controlled. He might be wise to switch his grips to start protecting his head rather than stay committed to my leg, especially because I have the underhook. Because now I have his head and that's one of the worst things that can happen in Jiu Jitsu, you can never let someone grab your head. I like to threaten the Americana just to get people to react. It works and I start to attack the arm triangle instead. Joey lets go of my leg and I use the opportunity to mount him while trying to maintain control of my head so I can still attack the arm triangle. Joey's doing a good job of defending and I can't get his arm up any higher using only my head. So instead I control his wrist and start attacking the Americana, but I use the grip to come up higher rather than submit so I can possibly transition into a mounted triangle or an arm bar. Neither of those submissions are opening up for me, so instead I transition back to the arm triangle by forcing Joey's arm across his body, using my arm and then reinforcing it and keeping it in place with my head. I'm not very good at arm triangles and other submissions with my left arm. As I went for this, I remember wondering if I'd be able to get it as I don't have that muscle memory and sensitivity that I have with my right arm. To get a tight arm triangle, you want to get your arm as deep as possible so your bicep is on the soft part of your opponent's neck. That's why I push Joey to the side so I can reach deeper with my left arm. In every choke, when you squeeze, the pressure has to go somewhere. The question is, where's that pressure going? In this case, I couldn't perfectly get the pressure on the soft part of Joey's neck, which is where the carotid arteries are. Rather than just squeeze and hope for the best or adjust my grip and positioning, I transition to something else as I don't have confidence in my left arm, which is now something I'm going to work on. I want to get to a high mount where submissions are easier and Joey doesn't want that. So look how he wiggles himself forward to improve his positioning. Joey has his back exposed as he tries to regard, which is normal, that's what you need to do. So I try to execute a chair sit back take, but don't have proper upper body control. I knew it'd be a risk without proper control, but tried anyways and Joey defends. Now it turns into a scramble and whoever can get their hips higher will win it. I win, but Joey locks up my arm and I need to be careful of the straight arm lock. The sweep isn't much of a risk because I'm standing rather than on my knees. I just stay patient and wait for my opportunity to clear my elbow past Joey's grip on my arm. Now that I'm out, I'm looking to start passing. Even with decent control of Joey's head, I need to be careful of Joey inverting underneath me as he has a reverse grip on my ankle. This type of grip can be used for taking the back using Kiss of the Dragon or answering to leg locks like you see me do here. I had two choices, try to counter by pressuring Joey or get out of there. I chose to play a safe and abandoned position. Joey is back with his shin on shin, which is a position I love and use all the time. To counter, I stay heavy so he can't lift my leg and look to staple Joey's leg. I want to guillotine Joey, but him hugging my body like this takes away the space between his neck and shoulder. Once he lets go and is on his elbow, now it's open for me. It's going to be next to impossible to finish while Joey still has a guard, so I look to backstep to clear Joey's legs. As Joey gets onto his side, the darts is going to be a better option. I couldn't get my arm deep enough, so I take a modified grip. Let's look again as I want you to see the moment that Joey initiates a simple and effective counter. 
It's when he brings his arm from across his body to the outside. This makes space between his shoulder and neck, which makes my grip a bit looser. It makes it difficult for me to position my body in a way to finish with maximum pressure on the soft part of his neck. I try to catch Joey with my heel to keep his back off the mat. Your opponent's back on the mat will strip your grips and make it very difficult to finish. This is because your arm won't be as deep. It's a lot easier to adjust to the correct spot on the neck when your elbow is deeper. And now I switch to a belly up Dars. Not only is it bad for your Dars for your opponent to get to their back, but it's also bad for them to get to their knees. That's why I do this little bridging motion to force Joey onto his side where I need him. The problem is, is I didn't lock it up perfect before I rolled over. I should have secured a better grip, but I wrongly thought it'd be good enough. And I hoped I'd be able to adjust if needed. The red arrow is where the pressure for my squeeze will go, but the green arrow is where I need it to go. The pressure is wrong because I need to drop my elbow to get my forearm parallel with Joey's neck. Elbow positioning is absolutely key in a Dars and makes the difference between a choke and a crank. I try to hook my legs to Joey to establish a guard so I can more easily drop my elbow into the right spot. I start to have success, but the grip on my bicep is stripping looser and looser, so I just abandon it. Joey is winning the grip battle by controlling my wrists, and I can feel that he wants to sit through. I try to take his back before he can, but am unable to. Joey regards in a half guard and is trying to get underneath me. That's why he's grabbing under my leg, but my grip on his head will prevent him and strip his grip. I try to arm weave pass, but my shoulder pressure isn't adequate enough, and Joey's able to frame and invert to get my weight off him and regard. Check out what I do though, I control Joey's legs. This way he can't enter into a submission or a good guard for himself. I enter straight into a double underpass by lifting Joey's hips up. And this is really what's crucial in a double underpass that we keep their hips up in the air. To finish the pass, I need to get an angle on Joey and to do this, I need to bring myself to Joey's left side. Joey stops this from happening by framing with his left arm. And now his framing makes enough space to roll through with the stack. I try to counter his sit through this time with the rolling back attack, but Joey has a decade of experience dealing with my rolling back attacks and again frames so I can't get what I want. I abandon it and once again, what do I do to prevent a scramble and maintain control? I control Joey's legs so I can come up and enter his guard on my terms. And that's what I do. Look how I really kill Joey's guard by getting an underhook on Joey, pressuring his right leg to mobilize it and pinning his hips down by staying heavy with my hips. I've got his guard killed, but I want to pass. You guys know I love the side smash and look how I enter it here. I think this is really cool. I make some space by lifting my hips up and use my knee to push Joey's leg across my body where I need it. This is a cool grip fight sequence. Look how Joey's controlling my leg with his hand to prevent the back step. I strip his grip, but now my hand's committed to his, which also makes it hard to back step because I can't force Joey's leg down. Instead, I use the instep of my other foot to get the job done. Buggy chokes are all the rage right now, and the defense to them isn't overly complicated. That doesn't mean that it's easy, but just that the answer itself is simple. You need to pry them off of you. The forearm and the face slash neck works really well for this, as well as posturing up with your head. You need to defend early, not when you're fully locked up in one, as you may no longer be able to make room to get your forearm in front of them and push them down. There aren't very many teaching moments in this part, and I've been doing this literally all day, so I'm just going to fast forward this a little bit. Joey's trying to get underneath me for a leg lock, so I dive underneath to try to take his back, but am unsuccessful. I still want to protect my legs though, so look how I keep my shin on Joey's thigh to prevent his hips from getting close to mine, which he needs to properly attack. I use my other hook to push him away and scoop my hips to his to attack a heel hook for myself. My hips are now too far from Joey's hips, and he finishes clearing the knee line by using his foot for assistance. As we exit, he attempts to entangle my legs again, but I'm proactive and get away. Like most scrambles, it's a battle of who can get their hips higher. My weight and size advantage really paid off here, as I think it really helped me with this one, to be honest. Joey's grip is stopping me from doing what I want to do, so I peel it upwards to get it off. And look how I use my forearm rather than my hand to push Joey's leg down so I can step over to mount. Anytime you see the space right here where the elbow is separated from the body, you can go for an arm triangle choke. Such a powerful and common setup is to crawl your fingers on the mat higher and higher until their arm is high enough to get your head to the other side. Now watch how I get my arm deeper to get it onto the soft part of Joey's neck. I wiggle and reach. I don't know how else to describe it, but I do it all the time. I always ensure my bicep is perfectly on the neck before squeezing. This is a super effective movement to get it deeper. Make sure to try it out. As you can see, I'm much more effective with my right arm rather than my left arm. Thanks for seeing around until the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a comment or a fist bump. I'll see you guys next time.